One of the strangest things in Islam is that breastfeeding makes you a relative. That is, a complete stranger can become your relative. <laughs> this is your friendly ex-Muslim and I'm going to tell you about one of the strangest rules in Islam, the most rational religion. Okay, let's get into it. This rule comes right from the Quran itself. Normally, when you have something weird, you right away think, oh, this must come from the Hadith. No, 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 no. This comes right from the Quran. Now, why would you need to become a relative? What does that mean? What am I talking about? Who cares if someone's a relative or not? Well, there's a reason why in Islam, you can't be alone with an unrelated opposite gender person. To be alone with them, you have to be related. Okay, this is called the rule of maharim or mahram. If someone is your mahram, that means that you're a relative and you can be alone with them in the house or whatever, right? If they're not your mahram, for example, a strange woman, then you can marry them. If they're mahram, you can't marry them. Okay, so you can't marry, you know, in the Quran it talks about this, right? Hafsa, the wife of the Prophet, used a clever workaround to make herself related related to Asim ibn Abdullah. So say you want to spend time with family that is distant or maybe friends, you know, kids coming to your house, you know, even if they're like the age of puberty, like talking kids, what do you do? You ask your sister to suckle them so that when they get big, you can be alone with them. Makes sense, right? Okay, this doesn't make sense, does it? There's even a hadith where a man was told to be divorced from his wife. He was commanded by the Prophet to divorce his wife because some lady came running along and said, Hey, I breastfed both of you, so you can't be married. Uqba married the daughter of Abu Ihab bin Aziz. And then a woman came and said, I suckled Uqba and his wife. I don't know if this was just some jealous woman or she just wanted to cause problems or what, but guess what? Uqba said to her, I do not know that you have suckled me and you did not inform me. I never, I never saw your breast before. He then sent someone to the house of Abu Ihab to inquire about that, but they did not know that she had suckled the daughter. Then Uqba went to the Prophet in Medina and asked him about it. The Prophet said to him, how can you keep your wife after it has been said, <laughs> after it's been said? All you had to do is say it, that both of you were suckled by the same woman. So he divorced her and she was married to another husband. Now, I don't know about you, but this is maybe this is a clever way to steal someone's wife. Be like, tell a woman to go shouting, I suckled both of you and then you can marry her. Eh, simple, right? I mean, Islam, it's rational, right? So of course this makes sense, right? Where did this come from? This weird, bizarre, strange thing. One workaround, weird workarounds happening with the companions and the wives of the Prophet. Two, weird, you know, divorce conditions after, you know, being notified that you sucked her breasts. Strange. Anyways, it gets stranger and stranger. And by the way, this affects us in the modern world too. I'm going to tell you how Muslims today are affected by this. We'll get to that. So when Muhammad's wife Hafsa wanted to spend time with the man, she would send the man to her sister to be breastfed. We read in Malik's Muwatta, chapter 30, section 1, number 8, Hafsa, the mother of the believers, sent Asim bin Abdullah ibn Saud to her sister Fatima bin Omar bin al-Khattab for her to suckle him ten times so that he could come in to see her. She did it, so he used to come in to see her. Hafsa couldn't breastfeed Asim because she didn't have kids, she had no milk. So she had to send her sister to breastfeed him 10 times, which transformed him <laughs> into Hafsa's foster nephew. So according to Islam, he becomes a relative. Like, this is, wait until you hear how weird it gets. Did anyone even think to ask what sort of nonsense is this in the first place? Why does this religion have this weird rule? It goes all the way back to the 7th century, nay, even before that. City Arabs used to send the children, 
their children to be suckled by a foster nurse because they consider the Bedouins to be more pure, not adulterated by city life. In the Sira, we find out that Muhammad was sent to be reared by Halima as an infant, hence he even had her as a foster mother. This creates a relationship because a child would often stay with the wet nurse for a significant amount of time, kind of like a long-term nanny situation, but it goes even further back, maybe as far as ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. Wealthy women didn't want to breastfeed. But here's the thing. Okay, whatever the ancient Arabs and Egyptians and whatever did, that's fine. They could do that. But how does that make you into a relative that can no longer be married, that the children of that woman are like relatives that, like, I mean, wait, wait until you hear the next contradiction. In the Islamic tradition, you become a relative by suckling. Because of the specifics of life in the 7th century Arabia, that's why. We now have billions of Muslims in the 21st century affected by some backwater understanding of genetics or relationships or whatever it was that caused them to think that this is how it works. Isn't the Quran supposed to be for all times? Breastfeeding makes you related. But the contradiction is the Quran insists that you have to call adopted children by their own names because they're not your kids. They're not actually your kids. They're adopted, right? You can even marry your adopted children's ex-wives just like Muhammad did with Zainab because they're not really your daughters but marrying someone who breastfed from the same breast, totally haram. Do you see the contradiction here? Islam is converting strangers into relatives just from breastfeeding yet people that you are literally adopting they're considered strangers and they don't take your family name all because of Zainab and Muhammad. Even more strangely, now I'm not even done with the craziness. Cousin marriage is allowed in Islam while there's risks to it and there's no health risks from marrying someone who was suckled from the same woman as you. Repeated cousin marriage has caused so much problems in the world, particularly in Pakistan and Arab communities. Yet this is completely allowed in Islam, you see, because Muhammad married his cousin Zainab and it was normal to do so in that culture. So, do you see how weird Islam is? Nothing to do with cousin marriage, even though that's problematic, but apparently this weird and specific foster relationship to suckling, that's called out in the Quran. Now, here's the hilarious part, the workaround. Islam creates this problem of not being alone with strangers, as you can see with Hafsa, and then the people solve it with an even more strange workaround that, again, Hafsa invented, I guess, because the system is bunk. It makes no sense. It's full of holes. I don't know why Hafsa wanted to spend time with Asim. It's kind of strange, but anyways. But in today's time, Muslims who want to adopt face a similar problem. The mother cannot be alone with the adopted son. We're talking a mother with a baby or a child. Of course, the baby she can be alone with. But when that, when that baby becomes like a teenager, this, this child that she raised, she can't be alone with him. Or the father with his adopted daughter. They have to do this weird workaround for adopted children because an adopted child is not considered a blood relative under Islam. I know a Muslim woman, a family member, a relative, that had to do this weird workaround. She tried to breastfeed her adopted son to make him mahram, but couldn't because she had no breast milk because she wasn't pregnant. So she sent her adopted son to be breastfed by her sister, who luckily at the time just had a baby and was lactating. So technically now they are related by suckling. Only in Islam can she be both an adopted mother, but not really a mother because adoption is not part of Islam, and also an auntie by breastfeeding. She's technically an auntie because technically her sister is a mother. She's not. Islam doesn't encourage or facilitate adoption, which is so sad. As I mentioned earlier, Muhammad didn't invent any of this. It was probably a pre-Islamic custom or value and Islam incorporated it into the religion. There are many other examples of pre-Islamic customs and beliefs such as the sacred months, Hajj, evil eye, jinns, and whatever. This particular rule is confirmed in the Quran. The Quran says in 423, prohibited to you are, and one of the ones it lists are, foster sisters and foster mothers from suckling. The Quran calls out this suckling. Even today, you're reading a book that literally has no relevance because nobody does this nowadays. Many Muslims claim that Islam is the most rational religion. Everything in Islam makes sense. 
Does this make sense? No. It's full of contradictions and is. It just creates more problems for Muslims. It doesn't solve the real problems they have with like cousin marriage or adoption. It creates hoops that Muslims have to jump through to solve problems that it itself invents. This breastfeeding rule adds no value to anyone's life. Nobody's better off than having to breastfeed the adopted kids to pretend to be related to them. Back to the incident with Hafsa and Asim. Women shouldn't have to breastfeed men to want to be around them. Is this something close friends should do? Here's my son. Can you send him to your wife to be suckled so he can sleep over at, at her house when he gets bigger? Let's be honest. Islam is not rational. Islam is a mishmash, the religion of pre-Islamic teachings mixed with Christianity, Judaism, and imported into the 21st century and believed in by those who don't know better. If you'd like to support my ongoing struggle to share this message, or if you've appreciated the work that I've done, join me now on Patreon to support the channel. Every little bit helps. Guiding one person away from Islam is a life saved from servitude. Thank you to my current patrons for your continued support. This is your friendly ex-Muslim signing out.